Hey everyone, it's another update of my JBJ 28 gallon LED tank. Uh, many changes as usual. I'm always doing something to this tank. A um, couple of deaths of coral in my tank. I went on vacation for Thanksgiving for four days. Came back, my long tentacle plate coral was dead, and my ultra blue Maxima clam was dead as well. Uh, what happened was my jawfish are continuously digging every day and uh, got sand all on top of the plate coral because I usually uncover it but I wasn't there to uh, blow sand off it it uh, was covered with sand when I got home it was dead and then the clam was close by uh, to the plate coral so I don't know if that had an effect to it because it was very healthy when I left and or maybe got sand onto it as well so that died as well um, my crocea clam is not here as you see, but I did just trade it in. It was actually fine where it was. Uh, actually, it was. I replaced it with another smaller blue ultra uh, clam here. And uh, the uh, fish you just seen pass by is a new addition, was the mystery wrasse. Uh, I don't know, it went probably in the back. Uh, there's my dotty back, flame angel. Uh, my candy stripe hogfish. But my last update, I had another one. It was a little, a little smaller. Uh, another you can see in the back corner there. My Maxi Mini uh, Carpet Anemone uh, took its third victim. So I had to remove that anemone for some reason. Um, ever since I fed it its first silver side, it started killing fish. So um, maybe it wasn't a great idea because uh, I had it for about seven months. And... Uh, left everything alone but uh, ever since I did that uh, I start losing fish now if you hear, if you hear that's on the glass here I also got a, a yellow cucumber and uh, he's a little filter feeder hanging out there moved my uh, frog spawn on this side as you can see here I didn't want it to be touching the uh, torch or the pearl bubble coral on the other side I moved my red gagorni over there so that's more light it was actually the uh, Part of it was dying because it was sitting in the shade, so I had to move that up for there too as well. Um, I brought back, I actually gave the, one of the kids at the fish store my uh, two gobies, my neon goby and my clown goby, uh, just because, as you can see here, I always wanted to get one or try attempt to have one of these in my tank, a uh, dwarf lionfish. So... Uh, he's been eating gold shrimp. I'm trying to wean him off into the silver sides. Uh, just uh, takes time because these guys are a little tricky from my understand of getting them weaned over. As you see, uh, he's uh, blueberries protecting his little hole there. And uh, when I was getting these uh, gobies out, when I took, I had to take some rock out because it just was too tough to catch. They have an elaborate system uh, of the den underneath all this rock. They have about. I would say seven entrances and a main den um, going underneath these rocks. As you can see here, Freckles, um, he's on a different spot, but this hole here is all connected all into the back. There's entrance over there, entrance over here, entrance over there, entrance on the side. There's an entrance over there in the middle over there where you can't see. Uh, I only noticed that when I took the rock off, and it just, it's just phenomenal how these two jawfish were able to make a big den inside all this live rock and also they made my sand bed very big I don't know if the light is good but uh, it used to be two inches of sand I had it sand up to here if you can see where my finger was lower there I have an about an inch and a half two inch sand all around so pretty much that's where all the sand is from the middle of this tank and pushed outwards um, but it just it's crazy how these two jawfish actually had they're all uh, den that's all connected to each other and it is my mystery rest it's coming around um, I move I prop my uh, scoli here on an angle uh, because my Yasha gobies are on that hole there and it's always getting pushed in with sand so I figure with that rock the scoli's on it's gonna at least give the uh, some protection of that sand from always going in and so far so good so at least the uh, my two Yasha gobies and their shrimp have a little hole opening so they could just come in out and they go uh, here's my orchid dotty back, moving around, and you can see here, I just love, this is one of my favorite color wrasses out there, you can, you can see they still got the full lines on them, 
it's nice and chunky. There's freckles on the side over here. Um, there's another entrance, like I said, over here as well. The torch coil, as you see here, is, it's just nice and happy over here. It's a two-headed uh, torch coil is growing, so I just kind of move move the stuff there. Uh, also, I uh, uh, had a lantana uh, Monty Pork uh, coral here. It was actually, uh, I guess my urchin must have knocked it off and uh, pretty much came a jawfish uh, building block. So pretty much I was gone. It was a $40 piece. It gone real quick. <clears throat> you can see my flame angel. He uh, he, he tries to be a, a tough guy in his tank. Uh, I mean, he'll chase my dolly back once in a while, but he, you know, he, he leaves my hawkfish alone. He leaves the... Blunny alone, and leaves with the mystery ass alone. Well, actually, in the beginning, when the mystery ass came in, he thinks he was boss, but the uh, mystery ass is like, "I'm bigger than you, and uh, leave me alone." So he gave up on him, but he does chase the uh, dotty back once in a while, as you can see. He just a little quick chase, but um, you know, it's a short spurt, just a little on the boss thing. It's never nipping his tail or anything like that. And there's my uh, hyphen perchlet there, Rocky. Next to Trip, who's uh, doing very well since April. I had him oral a. Uh, and there's pretty much zero copepods pods in this tank. He just eats cycle peas, baby mice shrimps. I have to use the Hikori brand. I also use the PE mice shrimp uh, because that's probably the best quality mice shrimp on the market, from my understand. Uh, but he has that the Hikori because the Hikori has a lot smaller pieces. The high, uh, the PE mice shrimp is big pieces. It's good for my other fish, but not for him. He can't fit in those little mouth. So. Uh, I have actually both, so fish get spoiled, but you know, got to keep them all healthy and eating. As you see, my pulsing zine is just doing great. Toastful leather doing right there, and there's my blunny here. And uh, you know, she changes colors, anything like that. As you see here, see my flame angels trying to show how tough he is, but he gives up after which he realizes he doesn't do anything to that blunny. So right there, my uh. Pink polyp, green cap, precornis, right there, still expanding on this rock. Uh, my red planet still growing nice. My Billy Poor, my Nella Green Acro tip. I moved my uh, A can here, uh, not the A can, the uh, War Coral Favia. Uh, it's actually doing better there. That's my uh, right above it's my Bird of Paradise uh, coral there. And this is a nice uh, piece, maximum claim here. Small piece. So I moved some of my eight cans around too as well. Like I said, over there, I just couldn't see it. And uh, that's it. So, oh yeah, I also moved my uh, blue mushroom over here. I want to have the, the green over here, the orange, and the blue. And, you know, take from there my uh, purple plume. Uh, sea fan, and behind there, if you can't really see, is another entrance to this elaborate den that they made. And there's no SPS coral, my Demicornis, uh, doing very well as well. And uh, my tuxedo urchin here, James Bond here, he had this little piece of Kato. I don't know if you've seen in my other videos, it was a little piece, but this Kato keeps on growing on him. <laughs> So, uh, that's his new thing that he carries around the tank. I do have my Letty Nudie branch somewhere. I can't find him at the moment. But, uh, as you can see here, uh, Jacques has recently molted. And let me see if I can get a zoom in there. If you can see the yellowish on his abdomen, that's all eggs. After she molts, uh, she gets a nice set of eggs. And if she mates, I guess, with the fire shrimp, a red, uh, there's going to be little babies floating everywhere. So, happens usually once a month, which is uh, pretty good for this fish because they like to munch on them. And uh, that's it. So, uh, stay tuned again. Again, changes always, but um, lost my favorite coral was the play coral. Uh, it's hard to find. You, don't, you really, rarely find that in the fish store. Uh, but... 
hopefully uh, something comes down the road and uh, I'll probably get an old one. I guess it is an awesome coral and does very well as long as it gets no sand on. Okay, guys, if you have any questions or any comments or anything like that, let me know. I know it's definitely an overstock tank, but uh, the water parameters are perfect. And as long as the uh, there's no territorial regression or anything like that, uh, that will be fine. I mean, the small things you see with the angelfish is just what they do here and there, even a big tank. So stay tuned, guys, and I'll keep you guys updated.